Hi everyone, um, so today I'm going to show you how to create your GDPR compliant privacy policy with Termageddon by just taking you through the system. Um, so first, who needs to have a GDPR compliant privacy policy? Um, so that would be organizations located in the European Union, organizations located outside of the European Union if they offer goods or services to or monitor the behavior of European Union data subjects, and it also applies to all companies processing and holding the personal data of EU residents regardless of the business's location. Um, so the General Data Protection Regulation is a European Union privacy law, and if it does apply to you, you do need to have um, very specific disclosures in your privacy policy, and we do provide for those disclosures, and I'm going to show you how to create a privacy policy that works with that. Um, so first, just log in to your Termageddon dashboard, and you should see your install here that's already set up. Um, if you haven't set up your first install yet, make sure to check out one of our previous videos where I talk about how to do that. Um, so let's go into the install first. All right, and you should already have the global install information filled out as well, and that's in the previous video too. Um, so you're gonna click Add a Policy, and we're going to do the privacy policy today. So you're going to click privacy policy, and then it will take you right into your questionnaire. Um, so first, you would start with what information you collect on your website. Um, you know, so that'd be anything like contact forms, newsletter sign-up forms, anything like that. So let's say I collect the name, email, and phone number, and I just click those. Um, the second question, do you process data from people located in the European Union? Um, so this is the one where if you do need um, compliance with GDPR, you're going to click yes. And that's going to change uh, the questions in the remainder of the questionnaire just because GDPR requires you to have very specific disclosures. So we're going to click yes here and we're going to click next. All right. Data collection and reasoning. Um, so GDPR asks you to put down the purposes of collection of the information and what are the consequences um, of failing to provide that information. So let's say I use the name to contact you. Now, if you don't provide me with a name or if you say, okay, delete my name, um, you know, what is going to happen then? Um, so let's say I'll no longer be able to contact you. So email, um, let's say we use email to send email newsletters. So to send email newsletters. Consequences, we won't be able to send you newsletters. All right, phone number, uh, let's say to contact you again, and then we will no longer be able to contact you. And you can put in a couple um, a couple of purposes and, and consequences there. You know, you can even say there are no consequences. So for example, if you don't give us your name, um, you know, we'll still be able to call you because we have your phone number. We just won't be able to address you by name. Um, you know, or you could say just there are no consequences or you can put in multiple consequences there. All right, do you collect and use cookies? Let's say yes. Um, do you knowingly collect information from children under the age of 13? Um, we're going to say no here. Um, so websites that do knowingly collect information from kids under the age of 13 need to comply uh, with a special law for that. Um, that's very extensive and requires a lot of information. So right now we don't provide compliance for websites like that um, just because most of our customers don't need that. So we would just say no here and next. Um, how do you use any of the information that we have collected? Um, contact you, answer questions, send you email newsletters, um, enforce our terms of service. You always want to click that um, because you can't enforce the terms of service if you can't use that person's um, data to contact them, saying that they breached your terms of service. Um, resolve disputes. Um, and contact law enforcement in case of fraud and, and something like that. So how, who do you share the information that you collect? Um, so let's say third-party vendors. And GDPR requires you to disclose who you share that information with. 
um, but you can use categories. You don't necessarily have to enumerate every single person that you share it with. So let's say fraud prevention, and then parties that need to operate the website. How long do you store the information provided? Um, so GDPR requires you to have a set storage period and we allow for two things, definitive period. So you could uh, fill in, let's say I keep it for 14 days, or you could say until something happens. So for example, until you withdraw consent, until you delete your account, uh, things like that. So we're just gonna put in 14 days here. Do you use the information for direct marketing? Um, and direct marketing would be things like sending newsletters, um, sending advertisements, sending mail, um, that's an advertising, things like that. We're just going to say yes. Um, do you use the information you collected for profiling or automated decision making? Um, so automated decision making is making decisions by automated means without any human involvement. And profiling is the automated processing of personal data to evaluate certain things about an individual. Um, so those are very specific things um, that you would do. So for example, if you process data, if you process credit scores, and automatically um, the computer chooses if your credit score is above a certain amount, you get a loan. Um, that'd be something that's automated decision making. So we're just going to say no for now. Um, do you use Google Analytics or any other type of analytics program? Yes, let's say I use Google Analytics. Does your website contain links to third-party websites? Yes, um, that's going to help protect you um, in case something does go wrong on that third-party website. Uh, does the website respond to do not track signals? Um, do not track is a preference that users can set in their browser saying that they don't want to be tracked by a particular website. The law doesn't require you to respond to those signals in any particular way. It just requires you to disclose how you respond to those signals. Now, most websites um, do not respond to do not track signals, so you probably know here. Um, how can users opt out of their information being collected? Let's say don't put data into the website, click unsubscribe on emails, or you can contact us. Who should this user contact or request access to, amendments to, or deletion of their data? Um, so GDPR provides um, certain rights to users so they can access the data that you have on them. They can ask you to amend this data if it's wrong. They can ask you to delete this data. So let's say I want to do donata at gmail.com. Where do you process that data? Um, let's say I process it in Illinois. Do you have a data protection officer? Um, some companies are required to have a data protection officer. That's usually for larger companies, so we're just going to say no. Um, do you intend to transfer data to a third world country or international organization? We're also going to say no here. And what is your contact? This email here, donata at gmail.com. And then you're going to click submit. And that's going to take you into your embed code, um, which you can copy and paste it into your website source. We're going to do a separate video on how to do that. Um, make sure that you do copy this embed code and put it on your website instead of just copying and pasting the policy um, because the embed code actually allows us to automatically update it when the laws change. And if you just copy and paste the text, we won't be able to update it for you. Um, and you can view your policy here as well, um, just in case you want to read through it. Um, so that's it. That's how you co uh, create a GDPR compliant privacy policy with Termageddon. Um, let us know if you have any questions about that. And thank you for watching.